Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about Bitcoin. 98% of the people with a Bitcoin address, I should say people and entities, because some cryptocurrency is owned by a business or a fund or some other entity. Bottom line, 98% of all Bitcoin addresses are in profit. Woo! That is huge. Plus, in other news today, we see a critical mass of long-term Bitcoin holders seem to be making 100,000 inevitable. The UK newspaper Independent covers Bitcoin's mid-pandemic. We're seeing Bitcoin on TV and newspaper ads and a whole lot more. So let's get into it. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It really helps us out a lot. Now, I'm not a financial advisor. What you're about to hear, this is not financial advice. This is my opinion. And I want you to do your own research. In fact, we're going to cover several different articles and news uh, pieces. I'm going to give you the links so that if you want to learn more about that particular article or see what else was said, because I'm not going to cover the whole thing, you're going to have a link in the YouTube description so that you can click it and read the rest of the article and get the rest of the information. But use that as a, as a jumping point to start your own research and actually dig into some of these topics even deeper. So if you bought Bitcoin and, and invested $1,000 and held it for three years, how much money would you have? If you bought Bitcoin on January 1, 2017 and then sold it December 31st, 2019, it would have been worth $7,206. In other words, your initial $1,000 investment grew sevenfold. Now, these numbers cover the rest of the years of Bitcoin in three year increments all through its entire life. You might want to pause the video and take a closer look, but here's the most important point three years, whoops, three years is kind of like the key when you start looking at the history of the price of Bitcoin in order to get in profit. If you've bought Bitcoin, held it for three years, you're basically, it's a, it, historically, it would be 100% that you would be making money. Now, there's periods of time like this year where you could have held Bitcoin for less than three years and been a profit. In fact, if you bought Bitcoin on January 1, 2020 of this year, you would have paid $7,000 for your Bitcoin. And as of August 19th, 2020, that would be worth $11,838. That is 65% growth year to date. And we're not even into it for a full year yet. I mean, we may see a much higher number by the time we hit December 31st. Personally, I think so, but that's not financial advice. That's my opinion. Now, 98% of all Bitcoin is now worth more money than when that address had initially purchased it. 98% of all addresses and the Bitcoin contained in those addresses is now in profit, which is absolutely phenomenal. In fact, this trend supports the widely circulating speculation that Bitcoin is indeed in the early phases of entering a bull market. And so take a look at this article. It has a lot more to say and there's some good stuff in it. Now this is quite interesting because a United Kingdom newspaper, The Independent, covers Bitcoin's mid-pandemic run. They talk about how other cryptocurrencies have mirrored Bitcoin's fortunes with Ether, Ethereum, rising from just above $100 in March to today's price of $430. So while Bitcoin has gone up by 65% so far this year, there's other cryptocurrencies that can, have gone up significantly more. And so this is an exciting time to be in cryptocurrency. 
And one of the other things is, is it's obvious that we're going to be approaching critical mass. You know, a lot of people out there have been very negative about Wall Street getting into cryptocurrency. But one of the benefits of Wall Street getting into cryptocurrency is their advertising machine. In fact, a critical mass of long-term Bitcoin holders seem to be making $100,000 inevitable. 64% of Bitcoin's circulating supply had remained in the same wallet since 2018, which seems to suggest most Bitcoin has a higher valuation than the current market price indicates. According to Goldstein, many of Bitcoin's largest bag holders value the asset between $100,000 and $10 million. So one of the things that's driving the price of Bitcoin to go up is the fact that a lot of people who own Bitcoin refuse to sell their Bitcoin. And as long as, I mean, we already know that the maximum number of Bitcoin that will ever exist is 21 million Bitcoins. Today, there's only somewhere around 18, 19 million that are actually have been created. And out of those Bitcoins that exist today, a small percentage of them are actually available for sale. And so anytime a major investor wants to get involved in Bitcoin, they may have to pay a significant price and they will be, you know, when a whale gets involved in Bitcoin, they're thinking more long term because they don't get in and get out and get in and get out. They have a tendency to just buy and hold because whales have a tendency to be a little bit more long term investor. And so the result of that is every time Somebody with deep pockets buys, say, a million dollars worth of Bitcoin or $10 million worth of Bitcoin or a larger amount. They have a tendency to hold on to it longer term, which just simply means that there's less and less and less Bitcoin actually circulating, actually available for sale. And as a result of that, it's going to drive the price up because a lot of people that are currently holding those larger wallets of Bitcoin really do believe that that wallet, that those cryptocurrencies are worth $100,000 to $10 million and they're just going to hold on to it for years until it reaches those higher price levels and then they'll sell it. Some of them are so committed, they're willing to let it drop to zero before they start you know, before uh, they do anything with it, they'd rather uh, it's their Bitcoin has become a ride or die for a lot of people. Now, I mentioned this a, a moment ago and then changed the subject because I was on the wrong slide. But here's the thing. As Wall Street gets more and more into cryptocurrency and into Bitcoin, they're going to turn on their advertising machines. And their advertising machines are going to drive people towards purchasing Bitcoin. Key timing for adoption, crypto goes mainstream with TV and newspaper ads. Bitcoin is currently facing resistance at 12,000, but it totally pales in comparison to the resistance it faced and overcame at 10,000, which lasted from October or even September of last year until last month. The price has basically bounced off of 12,000 twice in one week and shows no real weakness, he noted. At worst, this is a period of consolidation. Tim M. Ecking, Managing Director of Digital Capital Management. So right now, there's been several TV commercials that have been released uh, advertising Bitcoin cryptocurrency for firms like Grayscale who's trying to attract more and more investors into their Bitcoin funds. But also that not only drives people towards their Bitcoin funds, but also towards the real product. And so as a result of their TV advertising, it makes people more interested and more willing to invest. In fact, there's a number of newspaper articles that are starting to come out um, and newspaper ads that are coming out in favor of Bitcoin. This guy says, a few years ago, I would have never expected a print advertisement related to cryptocurrency. I think the transition to the Bitcoin as a digital gold narrative is the reason that a print ad has been pursued, trying to get an older generation who invests in gold to view Bitcoin as a digital alternative. And so 
Galaxy Digital is the one that ran this ad and you can see that they spent some money to purchase a whole page, a full page ad. So how can I be of service to you? That's the news I have for you today. Um, leave your comments in the section below. I would love to hear from you and we will do our best to answer every comment, every, every thought, um, whether you like what I said or hate what I said. I'd love to hear your polite disagreements in the comment section below. In the meantime, I hope that you'll like, subscribe, and huddle, and do me a favor. Have a fantastic day.